Paul from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint the Warhammer 40,000 Robuto Gilliman from Forge World. If you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon page is linked below. Now on to the video. So this is the finished Robuto Gilliman. Really pleased with how it turned out. Had to tweak the eyes a little bit since. But it's got the nice non-metallic metal gold thread on the back of the cape. I'm loving the colours for the rest of it. The first colour we're going to use is Citadel Corn Red. I'm going to use this to do the scabbard of his sword, which he's clutching in that left hand there. Next, we're going to use a dose of Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone just to paint his face. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to paint his belt and the straps and also the leather kind of feathery bits hanging from underneath the shoulder pads there and at his waist, which I've read are called Terouges or Terouge or Terouges. But I'm going to call them little leather strap pieces so you know exactly what I'm talking about and so I'm not mispronouncing it every time. So Bane Blade Brown, the little leather strappy bits. Now we're going to use some Citadel Rakarth Flesh for his hair. I'll actually come back to Rakarth Flesh a little bit later and use it on his left lower leg because you have a little scroll there. You also have a skull which we'll be painting with Rakarth Flesh too. I'm going to use some Vallejo Black. This is just to paint all the segments between the battle plate. So all those little seals, unfortunately slightly too close to the camera here, so it is a little bit off shot for a few little early parts of the video. Then obviously zoom out so you can see it regardless of where it is in comparison to the actual camera. But just do all these armor seals in black and then we can come on to the next color. Another quick layer is going to be a little bit of Citadel War Flesh. It's just to paint the laurels that he has on his waist, just behind his head too. Next, it's one of the longest layers that you'll do on the miniature, and that is adding the Citadel Retributor armor to all of the gold. Now, there is absolutely tons of gold on this miniature. He's got like little trim all over the place, so I'm not going to list all the places that he has gold. If you want to see that, it's worth going onto the Forge World site and having a look at their miniature there, or having a look at the pictures at the very end of this, or there's probably some on Instagram by now as well. But if you Start on the gold, it will take you some time to do. But it does look class once finished. Now we're going to be using some Vallejo Model Air Chrome. This is going to be to do the silver on his sword and a few other little details. So you want to get a nice smooth layer of this on there. So that you can pick out those details a little bit later on. So here we go with the Citadel Rakarth Flesh Part 2. Bit of bad planning on my part, but it is to do the skull on the knee and the little scroll on the lower leg.
Now I'm going to use some Vallejo white. This is going to be to pick out some of the inverted Omega symbols, which he has in a great number around his person. You also have the Legion number on his shin there. So I'm going to pick out all of the white details with this. Particularly like the inverted Omega on his waist here. Do you think that's quite nice the way it's quartered? Pick out all those details, get them nice smooth white, and we can move on to the next colour. Starting the shades off, we are going to use Citadel Cassandora Yellow. I'm going to use this just to do his hair. Now you could, if you wanted to, do a few highlights once this is dried, but I actually leave it the way it is. I quite like the way it looks once it's dried. It looks like a quite pale, blondish kind of colour. Now we're going to use some Citadel Reitland Flesh Shade to do the skin on his face. So you don't want to go wild and do this so it's too dark in the recesses. You just want enough that it is going to pick those details out so that you know where you're working. Next up, Citadel Caro Bird Crimson. We're just going to use this to do the corn red sections on the scabbard. Next, it's Citadel Agrax Air Shade. Going to use this to do all of the Retributor armor. So once you put this on, the gold will start looking pretty stunning. It really does make it stand out quite nicely. Now it's time for some Citadel Contrast Snake Bite Leather. I'm going to use this on all of the Bane Blade Brown sections. This will give them a nice tan leathery colour that we can highlight a little bit later on. But once you start adding this shade to it, it really will start looking nice. Next up, Citadel Seraphim Sepia. We're going to use this to do all of the bits with Rakar Flesh, bar his hair, so that actually is just the scroll and the skull on his shin. So not that much at all, to be honest. I'm going to follow that with a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil. This is going to be used to do all of the chrome and metallic sections that we've done. Next up, Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade, and this is going to be to do all of the blue on the armour. You sprayed with Citadel McCrag Blue, the spray can, to begin with on this video. So once you put this Drakenhof Nightshade on, that will give it a good shade. The final shade is Citadel Bealtan Green, and this is just to do the laurels on the back there and the one on his waist. I'm going to return to the colours now. We're going to use Citadel McCrag Blue, and we're going to start reapplying colour to his armour. So on these armour panels, you want to think about where the light is hitting them. So the light coming down from above, you're going to get more shade on the underside of things. So the highlights are going to be nearer the top, unless there is an overhang, in which case the highlights are going to be slightly further down, because they'll be getting shaded from that bit above. So you see that as the highlights develop on this. 
if you think about where the light is getting it and don't shade or rather don't recolor the underside where it's shaded just leave that shade in the recesses so first layer done we are going to add a little bit of white to the previous color so a bit of white in with the macrag blue i'm going to start highlighting these panels now so you can see here that i'm adding the highlight to the top of each of these segments leaving the macrag blue below and also the Drachenhof nightshade below that. So now we're going to add a little bit more Vallejo white to the previous mix. What we do here is we're doing the final highlight with this mix on the top here. And we're giving it a little bit more colour than we usually would because we're going to come back with another colour and do an edge highlight to all these parts in a moment. To edge highlight, we're going to use some Citadel Rust Grey, which is a nice lighter shade, kind of similar to Macrag Blue, but a far lighter shade, so it is a nice one to edge highlight with. So we're just going to go over all of the edges that will be catching the light on the blue armour, and then we can move on to the next colour. So now we're going to start working on the gold and we're going to reapply that retributor armor. So like we did with the blue, you're going to be thinking about where the light's going to be catching it and applying more retributor armor to those areas and leaving the shade in the recesses and on the undersides of certain parts. Now going to highlight that gold using the Citadel Liberator Gold. This will catch the light that little bit more and give it that nice lighter gold shine when the light catches it. When you look at it from certain angles. Really does work well with the Retributor Armour this one. So again thinking about where the light's going to hit it the most. That is where you want to be applying the Liberator Gold. With the Liberator Gold complete, we're now going to mix some Vallejo Modeler Chrome with the Liberator Gold just to give it that final, really bright highlight. I'm using quite a large brush for doing this final edge highlight, it looks like. I do believe that I trade that down for a lot thinner one shortly. But this is just to do edge highlights, so think about the light coming from above and then just highlight certain areas where the light would be catching it the most. And that will make those edges stand out and give it that really nice shine that you want to see on gold surfaces. With the gold complete, we're now going to start working on those leathery tassels. We're going to start with Citadel Balor Brown. I'm going to start doing this in small, thin streaks, going 90 degrees to the edges of the leather straps and tassels. What this does, this gives you a rough, worn look to the edges so that it looks uneven. You haven't just got that lighter highlight smoothly going down there. It is a bit scraped and chafed as though it has been used and a little bit worn. We are now going to highlight that by adding some Citadel Rackarth Flesh to the Balor Brown and then do slightly smaller highlights and scuff marks using this. So you'll have those nice two shades of highlights and scrapes on the leather straps. We 
We're now going to add a little bit more Rakarth Flesh to the previous mix and just do some final highlights on some of the scrapes just to give them that slightly lighter and more deeply scraped look. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White to reapply the white to the miniature. So this will be all the inverted Omegas, the Legion number on his shin there, and also the cloak on the back. Now the cloak on the back is just completely white and washed with Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. And that's the only two colours that are on it at the moment, and when we reapply the colour, it's just going to be reapplying white to it. So what I tend to do is add more layers of white on the areas which are like the crests of the creases so that they're a bit lighter, and then slowly do like less layers of white into the areas where the apothecary white shade is there. I'm going to start with the decorations on the cloak using Citadel XV88. Now what I'm using here is this sort of like tan colour as the basis for some non-metallic metal gold because there's lots of gold on the miniature. I wanted to have it looking like there was gold thread on the decorations on his cloak. So I'm using this as the basis for that, so that when you have that gold colour on a cloak, it looks different from the metallic gold on his armour. So with that in place, we're going to mix a little bit of Screaming Skull to the XV88, and then we're just going to highlight this in the areas that we want to get lighter, as though it's gold and it's slightly reflective as thread. I'm now going to mix some more Citadel Screaming Skull with the previous mix. I'm going to start highlighting that again. Now what you want to think about here is the way we thought about the light reflecting on the armour and the armour plates. Think about it in a very similar way for this. If it's sort of like golden thread then it's going to be catching more light on those crests where the white is more brilliant. So you want to be getting the lighter patches of the non-metallic metal gold over these crests. Once again we're going to be adding a little bit more Screaming Skull to the mix and highlighting those areas that would be catching the most light where it would be getting reflected off the gold thread. Adding a little bit more Screaming Skull to the previous mix. We're going to give this another layer of highlights. Each time we're doing this, we're covering a slightly smaller area on what was originally the XV88. So you're going to have all those different shades of this. And the reason there's so many layers is because I want to get this to look quite smooth when you see it. Next up, I'm going to add a little bit more Screaming Skull to it. This is just going to give it another layer of highlights and just build up so that you get that nice dark to light on it. This is the last time that we're adding Screaming Skull to the previous mix. This is just to lighten it once again. Do really small areas of highlights this time. Now it's just pure Screaming Skull that we're going to use. Let's do one of the final highlight layers on this gold. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. And this is going to be to do the lightest of the dark parts that we're going to be shading a little bit. 
So leaving some of the XV88 on show, you are going to be adding this right clan flesh shade just to darken down some of those parts. So you have a little bit of right clan flesh shade on either side. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Agrax Earth Shade. And we're just going to darken down the middle of those right clan flesh shade areas a little bit more. The final bit to darken down, using a little bit of null oil, is the centre of those Agrax Earth Shade areas. It's only a little tiny bit of null oil on these, just to get that really darkened bit in the shaded areas. Now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel Cassandora Yellow, and just do a really, really thin layer of this over the whole section that we've just done, and I'll give it that nice golden yellow colour once it's all on there. And finally use a tiny little bit of Vallejo white just to do a few little spots of light where the reflection is brightest on that thread. Now we're going to be working on the scabbard and the grip of his sword. We're going to start with Citadel Corn Red and just reapply some of the colour, leaving the shade in the recesses. Now these are very thin areas that you're going to be working on in the scabbard there, so do make sure that you're using a really thin brush so you can just get that paint in there without kind of splodging over the gold or any of the shaded areas. We're now going to highlight the red using Citadel Wasdaka Red. And again, using a really thin brush just so you can pick out the details with that. You don't want to be doing too much and covering any of the other areas with that colour. And finally, a little bit of Citadel Pink Horror just to pick out the brightest highlights on these areas and make those stand out. Now we're going to start working on the skin. I'm going to start with Citadel Cadian Flesh Tone. And what you're going to be doing is reapply the colour here, but leaving the shade in the recesses. Now there is lots of curves and grooves and details on the faces of the Primarchs, so you do want to take your time and make sure you're trying to get all these. And this is why we're using a really, really thin brush. It's the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush. It's got a great point on it. It's ideal for working on those really, really detailed areas. The first layer done, we're going to mix some Citadel Kislev Flesh with the Cadian Flesh Tone and then start highlighting that again. Like we've done with everything else, think about the areas where the light is going to be catching the skin the most and highlighting them so it's brighter at the top and darker at the bottom. The only exception to this would be the jawline where you've got the cheek and the jaw sticking out a little bit. You want to put some highlights on there as well, leaving those going shaded into the section of the cheek that sinks in a little bit. Now we are going to use a little bit of pure Kislev Flesh to do another layer of highlights. And again, exactly the same as you've done on the previous layers. You're just doing thinner highlights with this one. Now using a little bit of Vallejo White, mixing that with Kislev Flesh just to do the final layer of highlights. 
and this is just going to be really really thin layers a bit too much white in that little section i've put on there so i tone that down in a moment but you want to be using this highlight to pick out the details and do the final highlights just to get that lightest bits of flesh on show there Now I'm going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. Now as I've had since I got long COVID last year, every now and again I do get a bit of shaking hands when I'm trying to paint. and trying to do the eyes on this guy. It was one of those days where I just couldn't keep a steady hand. Kept getting the eyes in the wrong place, trying to do his teeth. Kept getting the teeth in the wrong place, getting the white on his eyebrows and redoing his eyes several times. So that's why when you see the image of him, he's got... An almost fervorous look on his eyes. He looks a bit wild as though he's seen things. But when you've got one of those days and you just can't get the eyes right, sometimes it's best to just call it a day and leave him looking a little bit startled. So now I'm going to use some Vallejo Black just to put a little spot in each eye. Once again, trying to get the spot in the right place with a shaky hand did not work well. So lesson for next time, if the hand's shaking, don't do his eyes. So take your time, get the white in the right place, then get the black pupils in the right place. And once you're happy with that, you can move on to the next layer. So what I'm going to do to tone down some of that wide-eyedness is use a little bit of Vallejo Red Wash and just use that around the eyes. This will tone down the whites and make them not look quite as bright on those sections. So it'll make his eyes look not quite as wide. Also use a little bit of this on the lips as well. If you do a thin layer, it does give a little bit of colour to the lips too. Now it's time for Citadel Ricard Flesh. I'm going to start reapplying colour to the skull and the scroll on his leg there. So leaving the shade in the recesses, you want to reapply the colour and leave a little bit of shade down the centre or the top centre of that scroll too. We're only going to do one highlight because these bits are really tiny. So we're going to add a little bit of white to the Rakarth flesh. Or if you've got Ushabti bone or Screaming Skull, you could use these instead if you wanted to. We're just going to do some quick highlights on those areas to get the colour looking good. Now I'm going to work on the metals, so it's going to be Vallejo Model Air Chrome. Using this one on Gilliman because it's just such a nice shiny metallic. It's got loads of pigment in there so it covers everything but it looks really really good when you get that nice smooth layer and the light catches it, it really does shine. So I'm going to work on the laurels a bit here. I'm going to use Citadel Wire Flesh just to put the colour back on each of those leaves. I wasn't too impressed with the leaves themselves. I'm not too sure whether the mould of it wasn't too hot, but they were a bit iffy when I was trying to highlight them and paint them. So I don't know whether it was that or my eyes were off. But we're going to highlight those with a little bit of mook green and try and get those to stand out a little bit. It was quite difficult to see actually where the leaves were on it, so I think it might be a slight moulding issue because there wasn't a problem with the rest of the miniature. Now we're going to add a little bit more Mook Green and do another layer of highlights. This one is just really small edge highlights and the tips of the leaves and that kind of thing on each of these leaves here. So 
So now I'm going to use a little bit of Citadel and the Fist on Red. And this is going to be to do all of the small gemstones that are on the miniature. There's one on the laurel at the back here. He's got one on each side of the sword. There's actually a little round one a little bit higher up on the sword as well, which I end up doing in the same way. Just have a quick check, see if there's any more on there. So next we're going to use some Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to do a little crescent on the bottom left of each of these little gems. Just to make them look like they're catching a little bit of light there and the light's coming through it. And then with those done, we are going to use a little bit of Citadel Wild Rider Red. And do a smaller crescent on each of those gems. Now we're going to use a tiny spot of Druchy Violet from Citadel and just pop that in the top right corner of each of the gems. And this will give it that slightly darker shade. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo White. I'm just going to put a little spot of light in the top right of each gem and a tiny sliver of white in the bottom left of each gem. With that you have the finished Robute Gilliman. Really pleased with how he turned out, he's an excellent leader for my Ultramarines force. I'm very very pleased and hope you find that video useful. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you like the content and you'd like to support me, my coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.